Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. If you're new to my channel, I do book and movie reviews and this month I thought I would do something slightly different. So if you know about me, I have a PhD in Jane Austen and I'm a huge, huge fan of her work. And July marks the month of Jane Austen's untimely death in 1817. And so I thought that this would be the right moment to commemorate her work and also support institutions associated with her who are struggling with the situation at the moment. So throughout the month of July, every week, I will make a video dedicated to Jane Austen in the hopes of helping to fundraise money for two institutions. One is the Jane Austen Literacy Foundation, of which I'm an ambassador. So the Jane Austen Literacy Foundation does incredible work across the world supporting literacy projects. And the question that it poses is what would happen if the next Jane Austen was out there, but she simply did not have the resources in order to develop her education. And this is where the Jane Austen Literacy Foundation steps in. The other association I'll be aiming to fundraise for is the Jane Austen House in Chawton, where I've been many times and had a really wonderful time. So they've recently established a fundraiser and it was very successful thanks to the help of all Jane Austen fans out there. And even though its survival for the time being is taken care of, it's really important that we can continue to support this house in order to make sure that it stays open for all Jane Austen fans across the world to be able to visit it. So I will be leaving links below uh, for these two institutions so that you can donate as much or as little as you are able to at the moment. And thank you very much in advance for your support, as I'm sure the members uh, of these institutions will also be very grateful. And without further ado, the topic of this week is going to be the top five books about Jane Austen. So if you have read Jane Austen's novels or you're just interested to know more about her life, I will be suggesting books that would be a good way for you to start. And I will be ranking them in terms of my preference for the ones that I found to be more captivating in the telling of her life. So the first one is David Cecil's A Portrait of Jane Austen. And this is a book that you will be likely to find for very little money in pound shops across the UK and also on websites like AB Books or eBay, for example. And it's a really wonderful book. It has beautiful illustrations, so it's very visual. And for me, because I've written my PhD on places and property in Austen's novels, this was a really useful resource because when he is describing the various settings in which life took Jane Austen, this is accompanied by really wonderful illustrations of the period so that you can get an idea of what it would have looked like. So an example is, for example, here where it shows you Bath and it has an illustration of a building at the time and what it would have looked like. It's something that you would read very quickly, so it has a great deal of information, but it's very readable and the illustrations do help visualize the period and the places that Jane Austen would have visited. My pick number four is Maggie Lane's Jane Austen's Family. So this book is very original amongst Austen biographies because it doesn't just focus on Jane Austen's life, it focuses on her entire family. And so this is a really interesting book to read if you would like to find out more, not just about Jane Austen and the context in which she lived, but also what happened to the family before she was born. So for example, if you would like to know more about the portrayal of class in her novels. It's really interesting to hear Lane's telling of the 
progress that her family made and she talks very in great detail about their social situation and how it progressed uh, before Austin was born and after Austin was born as well. So you get to accompany the journey of her entire family. It's a really interesting book and the other advantage is if you like this one, then Maggie Lane is a very prolific writer on the topic of Jane Austen, so you would be able to then go and read other stuff that she's written. Book number three is Claire Tomalin's Jane Austen Alive. It's incredibly readable. It's a book that you could take with you on holiday. It's incredibly fun to read, and it's also very detailed, so it will tell you everything you need to know about her life. It's also accompanied by some illustrations uh, that you would be able to take a look at as well. So this would be a very good choice for a first book to go to if you're interested about Jane Austen, her period and her life. Pick number two is by possibly the most famous historian of Austen's work, which is Deidre Le Fay. And this is her family record. And Le Fay has written many different works about Austen's life and about Austen's period. So like Lane, she would also be a good candidate because if you enjoy this work, then you will have a whole array of other works that you could go to in order to find out more about Jane Austen in her period. And so this is an incredibly detailed work because Le Fay has worked on Austen for her entire life and she has devoted many years to the research on the period in which she was born and everything to do with Austen and her family. So she is incredibly knowledgeable about the entire Austen family. And another thing is that when I met Le Fay, I remember her telling me that what she cared about were facts, facts, facts. So one of the things that you are guaranteed is that there, is, there isn't going to be speculation, everything you are going to find here is going to be something that has been documented and Le Fay will take you through all of the different things that happened in Austen's life and the things that would have influenced her writing. So this would also be a very good choice of first uh, biography to read on Austen. And choice number one, which is my personal favorite because I think the idea behind this book is absolutely brilliant. I remember during my master's starting to think about what book I would like to write about Jane Austen. So I knew that my PhD had to be on Austen. I just hadn't decided yet what it was going to be on. So I remember that this book was just coming out at the time and I remember talking to one of my professors in my master's degree and her saying something like, God damn it, I really wish I had had the idea for that book. It's absolutely brilliant. And so choice number one is Paula Burns, Jane Austen, A Life in Small Things. And this book is absolutely brilliant because each chapter focuses on a particular object and then Burn takes you on a journey about the relevance of this object in Austen's life and in Austen's novels as well. And for example, one of my favorite chapters focuses on the crimson velvet cushions in Mansfield Park and these would have been based on a place in Stoneley Abbey um, that is quite close to where I live. So Stoneley Abbey is a place where Jane Austen would have gone to with her mother and her sister Cassandra because one of her uncles was trying to claim ownership over the place. So there was a problem with the will and the house technically could have gone to him and to someone else. So he figured that the best thing to do in terms of claiming ownership over the place was to go to it and just stay there. And so he got Austin and her sister and her mother and they stay there with him. I think it was for about two weeks. So this gave Austin 
an opportunity to stay in a house that was so much grander than anything else she would have seen before. And one of the things that Byrne argues is that this would have been the inspiration for, for example, Pemberley, that this would have been the kind of example that Austen would have gone to whenever she was trying to portray a very grand house. And so this chapter in the object of the cushions is particularly interesting because this is a place that we can definitely say was the inspiration for a section in her novels. So if you ever visit the chapel in Stonely Abbey, it is absolutely down to the cushions, the perfect description of the chapel in Southerton in Mansfield Park. And what's so interesting about this is that Byrne uses this object to then t take you on a reflection of Austen's life. So for example, in this case, she focuses on Stonely Abbey and the influence it would have had on Austen and how it would have felt for a woman of no property and who later would have made very little money from her novels, so who had no chance of ever supporting herself, suddenly becoming the centre or being dragged into the middle of this competition for property that was so grand that she couldn't possibly ever imagine owning it. So I highly, highly recommend this book. And Bun has also written many other wonderful books, but also other books on Austen uh, that I would highly recommend. She has one on theater and its influence for Austen as well. So this would be my first recommendation if you wanted to know more about Jane Austen, her period and her novels as well. Okay, everyone, that's my video for this week. Thank you very much for listening and thank you very much for also supporting these two very important institutions at this very difficult time. And I will see you next week for a new video on Austin. And in the meantime, stay safe and stay well.